Welcome to Nestle's classroom. We know that chloride concentration is higher in the extracellular fluid compared to the intracellular fluid. Uh, how, in this video, I shall try to explain how this concentration difference is formed for chloride and how this concentration difference is related to the resting membrane potential or local potentials. This is explained by the scientists in three different groups of cells in three different mechanisms. So, here are our cells. In the first group of cells, chloride, nice potential of chloride is equal to the resting membrane potential. It's minus 70 millivolts in this example. In the second group of cells, nice potential of chloride is less, more negative compared to the resting membrane potential. And in the third group of cells, nice potential of chloride is less negative compared to the resting membrane potential. So let us start with the uh, cells in in the group in the first group these are skeletal muscle cells and erythrocytes uh, chloride nerve potential in these cells is equal to the resting membrane potential in a condition like this should we think that chloride forms the resting membrane potential the answer is no. Actually, it's the other way around. The scientists believe that the resting membrane potential produces the concentration difference for chloride. Here is the mechanism. Uh, at, first of all, sodium potassium ATPase produces a concentration difference for potassium and sodium. Potassium being high in the intracellular, sodium being high in the extracellular fluid. And then mainly the concentration difference of potassium and partially in some cells the concentration of difference of sodium come together with the potassium leak channels and uh, sometimes with sodium leak channels to produce the resting membrane potential. We know that resting membrane potential always has a negative value in all of our cells. So, the inner side of the cell membrane has more negative charges. The story for chloride starts here. So, the negativity on the inner side of the membrane during the resting membrane potential pushes away the chloride ions that are also negatively charged and this causes chloride to leave the cell and produces a higher concentration of chloride outside the cell. Uh, we know that um, if an ion has a concentration difference, the ions tend to move from high concentration to low concentration passively by the kinetic energy and this is called diffusion. So if we want to send ions in the opposite direction uh, and produce a concentration difference, we need a force that will overcome the force of passive movement, diffusion. So in a case like this, we have to use metabolic energy. ATP must be used. If we have a look at sodium and potassium, a special pump, sodium potassium ATPase, has been discovered and it has even received a Nobel Prize. So this sodium potassium ATPase produces the concentration difference for sodium and potassium. A similar ATPase has also been discovered for calcium. There is calcium ATPase that sends calcium out of the cell and produces a concentration difference for calcium. But no ATPase for chloride has been found until today. So it's not possible with the information that we have in hand today, it is not possible to send chloride outward actively using ATP. And therefore, scientists have put together this theory to explain the high chloride concentration in the um, extracellular fluid. So resting membrane potential is formed by the effect of mainly potassium. And this resting membrane potential is producing the chloride concentration difference. In this case, there must be, of course, some chloride leak channels that are always open uh, so that uh, chloride ions can go out in this cell. If we are going to talk about the Goldman equation in this cell, the question is, the Goldman, are we going to put chloride in the Goldman equation? 
the answer that the scientists give is that we shouldn't because uh, chloride is not effective in the production of the resting membrane potential. It cannot be in the Goldman equation. It's the opposite way around. The resting membrane potential is working on the chloride to produce the concentration difference. So the scientists say that the chloride concentration should not be in the Goldman equation in a cell like this. So this is the condition that is already there. The resting membrane potential condition is already there. The chloride concentration difference is already there. It has already been produced. The information that I gave until now uh, is, is just to help us understand how this might have been produced. So I am going to explain how the resting membrane potential might have been produced in each cell. And on top of this, I will start to explain what will happen if chloride channels open. So we have explained the resting membrane potential in the cell. What is going to happen if, volt, if, if ligand gated chloride channels open in a cell like this? So when the channels open, the, is the chloride going to move or is it in which direction it is going to move? So let's have a look at the forces acting on chloride. The chloride concentration difference is pushing chloride inward. So the chemical force is inward and amplitude is, is amplitude of it is given to us by the nearest potential 70 millivolts. The resting membrane potential, the membrane potential being negative on the inside, is pushing the negatively charged chloride ions outward and the amplitude of it is 70 millivolt. What we see here is that there are two forces in opposite directions but equal in amplitude. So the net electrochemical force that can be represented by green is zero. If the ligand gated chloride channels open in this cell, nothing is going to happen. There will be no net movement of chloride or any uh, local potential production. Um, there is an extra information about chloride acting on stabilizing the uh, membrane potential through voltage-gated chloride channels in the skeletal muscle. This and the disease called myotonia congenita will be explained in another, in another video. So in this cell, the resting membrane potential produces the chloride concentration difference and if ligand-gated chloride channels open, no local potential is going to be produced. Let's move on to the second group of cells. These cells are especially the cells, the mature cells in the central nervous system. Uh, what do we mean by saying mature cells? Uh, we know that when we are born, the central nervous system has not completed its maturation. This is why a newborn baby cannot sit, cannot walk and cannot talk. So even after birth, central nervous system continues its maturation. So well, these are the cell group that has completed their maturation. What is the condition of, uh, in, of the resting membrane potential and local potentials in a cell like this? In a cell like this, we see that chloride nurse potential is more negative compared to the resting membrane potential or the nurse potential in the first group of cells. I tried to keep the resting membrane potential constant in all of these cells to make the example simple. So if you have a bigger nurse potential, a more negative nurse potential for chloride, this means that there's a bigger concentration difference for chloride. How did this form in a cell like this? Is it by changing the intracellular or extracellular concentration? The answer comes from the potassium chloride co-transporter. A protein is present on the membranes of this cell that uses the potassium concentration gradient to send at one potassium together with one chloride out of the cell. So in these cells, the action of potassium co chloride co-transporter increases the chloride concentration different, difference outside the cell. So an increase in the outside concentration is going to produce a bigger concentration difference and this is going to produce a bigger nice potential or in better in a better sentence, a more negative nurse potential for chloride. Everything 
that I have explained until now has already happened. And the condition here is that chloride nurse potential is minus 75 millivolt at rest, and then the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolt in this cell. So in a cell like this, waiting for being excited, if ligand-gated chloride channels open, what is going to happen? Let's have a look at the effects of the chemical and the electrical forces on chloride. So we know that now the concentration force, the chemical force over chloride is bigger than the force that was present in the first group of cells. It is 75 millivolts and that it's pushing chloride into the cell. What about the electrical force? The electrical force is, is because of the negativity on the inner side of the membrane is going to push negatively charged chloride ions out of the cell and the amplitude is 70. So 75 millivolt chemical force is pushing chloride inward, 70 millivolt electrical force is pushing chloride outward. What is the net electrochemical force that I can represent with a green arrow? We can see that with a 5 millivolt net electrochemical force, chloride is being pushed into the cell. So when the ligand-gated channels open, chloride is going to uh, get into the cell through the channels by the net electrical force. And we know that because chloride ions carry a negative charge, they are going to bring more negativity to the interior of the cell and the cell is going to, the cell membrane is going to become more negative, membrane potential is going to become more negative and this is called hyperpolarization. So in mature cells of the central nervous system when ligand gated chloride channels open the cell is going to be hyperpolarized. The Hyperpolarization is a type of local potential and the chloride channels, the, the ligand gated chloride channels that are uh, uh, the open here are uh, dependent on GABA or, or glycine. So the ligand is GABA or glycine. So when GABA or glycine open chloride channels, this is going to produce hyperpolarization type of uh, local potential in the mature cells of the central nervous system. Let us have a look at the third group of cells. In this cell, the nurse potential of chloride is less negative. It's smaller. This means that the chloride concentration difference between extracellular and intracellular fluid is smaller. So how did how was this produced? By a change in the intracellular or the extracellular concentration? Um, it was discovered that there are sodium potassium chloride transporters on the membrane of these cells. A transporter like this uses the concentration difference of sodium to bring in one sodium, one potassium together with two chloride ions. So in these cells, um, at the, under resting conditions, this uh, transporter is increasing the chloride concentration in the intracellular fluid, which results in a decrease in the concentration difference and a decrease in the nest potential or the nest potential in better words becomes less negative. So the information that I have given until now is just to help us understand the condition at the resting membrane potential. So from now on we need to talk about what is going to happen in a condition like this if ligand gated uh, GABA glycine gated chloride channels open in a cell like this. So let's have a look at the uh, chemical forces and electrical force on chloride. We know that the chemical force is still inward but compared to the first group of cells the chloride chemical force is smaller a 65 millivolt force is pushing chloride into the cell electrical force is still the same uh, it's the resting membrane potential because the resting membrane potential is with negativity on the inside negatively charged chloride ions are uh, pushed outward if we compare this the net electrochemical force in a cell like this is outward which means that if ligand gated chloride channels open chloride is going to be pushed outward with a 5 millivolt force, net electrochemical force. 
So in a condition like, in a cell like this, if ligand-gated chloride channels open, chloride leaves the cell. Chloride is a negatively charged ion. This means that the cell is going to lose negative charges, which means that the interior of the cell is going to become less negative or more positive. And a condition like this, um, local potential produced by ligand-gated channels uh, like this is called depolarization. So in, in a group of cells, the, um, when the ligand-gated chloride channels open, the cell is depolarized, which means the membrane potential is closer to the threshold and these cells are more excitable. The uh, effect of GABA or glycine that we expect in the mature central nervous system cells is hyperpolarization and inhibition related to this. But in immature central nervous system cells, GABA is producing depolarization, which is an effect that you are not expecting. A similar uh, effect is seen in, in, in the central nervous system cells in some diseases of epileptic condition and in some chronic pain syndromes. Um, what are the other cells in addition to the immature central nervous system cells? Sensory neurons, sympathetic ganglion cells, heart muscles, smooth muscle cells, leukocytes and epithelial cells also have a condition like this on their membrane. Uh, in this video, I have tried to explain the chloride concentration difference, how it is formed, how and how it can be affected by different transporters, and how it is related with the resting membrane potential and local potentials. I hope it has been useful. Thank you for watching.